Well, hello, and uh, this is my third in a series of uh, discussions about DFSP or dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans. Uh, well, I've been doing a lot of research about it as much as I can. You, know, you get on and you Google and Google and Google some more, and then when you think you Googled everything you can, you just Google a bit more. One of the promising, well, a couple of promising things that I found, and I mentioned in an earlier uh, video that I recorded, uh, was some discussion about Mohs micrographic surgery. I didn't really spell it out too much, but um, Mohs is spelled M-O-H-S, and uh, it's named for the man who invented it. Mohs micrographic surgery is well, I, I won't be able to really explain it too well as far as trying to give you a, a description of how. I mean, I can give you a description, but it really it helps if you have a picture of how this works. But I'll see if I can explain the best I can. Uh, let's say that, well, I'll show you with my tumor. Um, basically, I'll bring this up a little bit closer if I can. Sorry for the bumping around, but as you can see, the tumor is here, and what they'll do um, with just a, I, I don't know, call it a radical surgery, or well, you can call it whatever you want. Um, what currently I'm, uh, is being proposed to me is that we're going to take, and we're going to excise this, and of course it's probably let's say, at least three or four centimeters under the surface of the skin, and maybe more than that. <clears throat> and most likely, after an MRI, we'll discover that the uh, finger-like root system that is sure to be there will reach down a little bit further. Um, how much further, we don't know, and obviously that's something that we need to look at. Of course, I haven't told anybody yet, but I did have my uh, consultation with the plastic surgeon this last Wednesday. And he is a plastic surgeon, but he's not um, trained in the art of Mohs micrographic surgery. To be trained in the art of Mohs micrographic surgery, apparently you uh, can only be trained at one location, from what I understand. I might be mistaken on that, but being trained at one location ensures that everybody that's graduating knows exactly what they're doing when they do this. And of course these people are interested, in, this is their livelihood and uh, uh, their name and reputations are on the line here. Uh, so that's good. I mean it's like getting a, a dentist who's board certified. Uh, a board certified dentist is sure to be better, um, better trained and, uh, and he's certified. I mean, other people, other dentists, his peers have looked and examined his work and they know him to be able to perform the work that uh, is required under the certification. And so the same thing with this Mohs micrographic surgery. Uh, other surgeons who are already qualified, pre-qualified under the Mohs um, certification process, whatever that is, uh, they, you know, examine the person who wants to be a Mohs surgeon and they test him and I don't know, you, you can look it up online though, but basically you can be sure that if you have a Mohs micrographic surgeon that he knows the Mohs technique and he can perform it um, to the specifications that's required in, in a, through the certification process. Okay, anyway that's a lot of mumbo jumbo. <laughs> But basically, I, you know, I don't want to leave any part out. I want to make sure that if you're watching this, um, that you want to find out information regarding this uh, process of the DFSP that I have, maybe you have the same thing. Um, I can't assume that everybody that watches these videos is just a concerned friend. Some of you may come along and, uh, and have DFSP. And some of you 
having this DFSP will want to look at all the available options. Maybe your particular tumor isn't going to be amenable to Mohs micrographic surgery. Maybe uh, maybe you'll choose some other uh, type of surgery. Maybe I don't know. I mean, it, it could be much worse. Maybe it's I've heard of one case with my doctor shared with me that the tumor had actually had uh, tentacles that reached down into bone and into the lung. And obviously, micrographic surgery is not going to work on uh, that type of um, intrusion into the body I and mean, getting into different systems in the body and things like that. So uh, my prayer is that you don't have anything like that. But if you do, um, you know, certainly follow the advice of your physicians, get second opinions wherever possible, and um, in you know, look at different uh, drug therapies that might be available. Not necessarily chemotherapy. My understanding is that chemotherapy is not um, the best choice when it comes to dealing with this specific kind of cancer. Although there is a drug out there, um, goes by the trade name. I think I want to say trade name of Gleevec, G L E E V E K. I've seen one spelling. I've seen another spelling as G-L-I-V-I-K or E-K. So there are variations of how that's spelled. But basically, this drug was developed. It's called Iminitib Mesolate, I think, if I'm saying that right. And this drug was developed for leukemia. And uh, leukemia patients who have taken this... Um, well, I've looked at different sites, and I've seen nothing but glowing reviews. That it puts people into remission. And uh, I can't think of a better thing than somebody who has cancer. They can say uh, with all certainty that they are in remission and have been for the period of time that they've been on this drug. Very expensive drug, from my understanding. It's somewhere around $3,500 for a 30-day supply of tablets. Certainly, uh, that's outside of my capabilities. I don't have that kind of money. Um, so, if it comes to me taking Gleevec, well, uh, I guess I'm going to have to look to the Lord to provide me for that. In any case, back to the Mohs micrographic surgery. As I said, I want to try to keep my videos under 10 minutes. 8 minutes would be optimum, but I'm already reaching 8 minutes. Uh, Mohs micrographic surgery... <clears throat> has a nearly 100% uh, success rate as far as the recurrence of these. And these are nasty little buggers, these things here. Um, not only do they grow on you and look ugly and uh, that they're cancerous, they can metastasize, and if I'm saying that word right, and go to other parts of the body, that you understand. You might not understand the word, but... You know what it means if it goes to your lung or to another vital organ. Not only does it do that, but um, it has these things, these um, roots, if you will, that can reach into different parts of the body. So, anyway, back to Mohs. Um, Mohs surgery is able to, uh, with a success rate of about 95% uh, or better for most of these types of tumors from what I understand. Now, not all of them are going to be able to be, um, you know, not all are amenable to uh, the most micrographic surgery, but many are. And so I hope that that's what you have. That's what I'm going to be shooting for. I haven't talked to my doctors about this yet, but that is certainly what I'm going to be trying to do is to get the most micrographic surgery. And that, of course, is all going to depend on the MRI, which is going to be coming up in another three days. So when that time comes, then maybe I can share some more with you about Mohs micrographic surgery. So anyway, I hope you all have a good night. And because it is nighttime for me, it's about 1030. And uh, anyway, have a good night. And we shall see you sometime very soon.